The Art of Conversation, Twelve Golden Rules by Josephine Turk Baker. Golden Rule number 11. Indulge occasionally in a relevant quotation, but do not garble it. I've just been reading a very interesting article entitled Learning by Heart, and I've become impressed with the idea that one should occasionally commit to memory inspiring passages in verse and prose. In the language of the author, they may come to us in our dull moments to refresh us as with spring flowers. In our selfish musings, to win us by pure delight from the tyranny of foolish castle-building, self-congratulations, and mean anxieties. They may be with us in the workshop, in the crowded streets, by the fireside, sometimes on pleasant hillsides, or by sounding shores. Noble friends and companions, our own, never intrusive, ever at hand, coming at our call. Someone has said that an apt quotation is as good as an original remark. It is certainly always relevant. We cannot all be Wordsworths or Tennysons, Charles Lambs or Carlyles, but we can make some of their best thoughts our own. A conversation or a letter in which some choice quotation finds a place is certainly thus improved and lifted above the commonplace. It was Johnson who said that classical quotation was the parole of literary men all over the world. For a long time I have been copying in a notebook extracts that have interested me but it did not occur to me to commit them to memory. Hereafter I shall do so, for I am sure that it will add to my resources, both in conversation and in letter-writing. Some of the most delightful letters that I have ever received have been those in which there have been quotations. So relevant, so charming, that for the time being they seem to have been written for me alone. I have always hesitated to interpolate my conversation or letters with quotations, for fear that I might seem to be airing my familiarity with classical literature. Of course, one does not wish to appear pedantic, and one will not if one will use the quotation for the occasion, instead of making an occasion for the quotation. The proportions, too, of a conversation or a letter must be preserved. If one is talking about a commonplace subject, the quotation, if one is made, should be in keeping with the thought. As a clever writer has said, a dull face invites a dull fate, and so with a commonplace subject. The treatment should be in accordance with it. Some persons are never able to quote a passage or tell an anecdote without perverting the meaning. In fact, I have long been interested in noticing how inexact the majority of people are in making statements of all kinds. I can recall several friends who are unreliable in what they say. Their statements should be checked up, verified, as we say in business. As someone has said, a garbled quotation may be the most effectual perversion of an author's meaning, and a partial representation of an incident in a man's life may be the most malignant of all calumnies. How very relevant that quotation is. You have certainly just exemplified your own suggestion, namely that the quotation should be used to suit the occasion. Shall we make this golden rule number eleven? Occasionally indulge in a relevant quotation, but do not garble it? Certainly. A golden rule that it is well occasionally to observe. End of section 11.